Hi guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little mini sewing tutorial on this fur stole. It's a super easy project if you can't manage to make yourself a fur coat or a fur vest. This thing is just like a long rectangle of fabric, so it's really, really easy. I just asked for a meter of fur, cost me 30 bucks, and it hits the floor on both sides. Super big and grand and luxurious and dramatic. If you didn't want something so long that it drags across the floor behind you, you could cut it down to like a third or even a fourth of a meter and just have something that's like nicely draping over your shoulder. Um, but the technique is gonna be more or less the exact same, so let's get started. So I'm actually going to start this off with a little game plan of what we're going to do in this video. So we're starting off with a rectangle of faux fur. Like I said, I got a yard, but the width that you get will depend on where you get it. So let's say it's more or less a square. I want to end with a front and back hot dog shape for the first stall. But if I cut my front and back out simply by taking that original square in half, I would get a really wide but short stole. It would look like an oval. I, and I want it longer and skinnier like a snake. So I'm gonna cut out my original square fur into four equal strips by measuring halfway and then halfway again. And I'm gonna round the corners off, which is optional. I just don't want my end product to have corners at the ends. But this way my stole is gonna be half as wide and twice as long. The reason for the numbering here is because some furs come out in a particular direction and you want for your one and two to go in the same direction and likewise for your three and four, which is why we have the rounded corners alternating. The idea is we just don't want any seams to be visible and we want one long stole that doesn't look like it was two halves sort of Frankenstein together. If your fur is really fluffy or short enough so that the direction of hairs isn't particularly significant, you don't have to worry about this. James Mansfield has a great tutorial on something just like this, but hers is like fur facing on one side and the back is like a non-fur lining and mine is just fur on both sides, so it's a matter of preference. So the first step is to turn our original cut of faux fur into these four long strips. So mark the middle of the fabric by halving the side length and divide those two halves into further halves so you have four equal quarters. Pro tip, when cutting a straight line into fur, it's sufficient to just make one small snip at your marks and then you can just rip the fur apart after that. When you use scissors, you actually cut a lot of the hairs, which is really messy, but this way you're only really cutting through the fabric backing that the hairs are attached to, so it's no mess. Plus, you sort of feel like the Hulk, which is more fun, and that's the most important part. Now that I have four of those thin rectangles, I'm taking two of these and I'm gonna attach them at the short ends, which is this seam right here. And this is just me checking that the hairs are going in the same direction. And after you sew along that edge, you can cut off any excess fabric on the other side so it's not bulky on the inside and take a brush and loosen up the hairs that were trapped in the seam so that it's not as visible and do the same to the other two thin rectangles from the four that we ripped apart. The next step is to round out the corners of our now extended rectangle. And I'm doing this because I want for there not to be any harsh corners in my finished result. But like I said, it's completely optional. Now we should have our front hot dog and back hot dog and they're totally symmetrical meaning there's no difference between the front and the back and we can now attach them right sides together and sew all the way around. You're gonna have to leave a hole somewhere. I chose to leave one in the middle about 20 centimeters long so that you can pull it inside out afterwards. So this whole process is what's going to take you the longest because you should be tucking in the fur into the seams just so that the seams look nicer in the end. See all this fur that's hanging out here? All of that fluffiness is going to be lost and wasted if you're just going to sew right there without tucking it in. It's all a very slow process and you can tuck and pin all the way around before going to the machine, but it was pretty hard because my fur was really thick. I found that instead of pinning, I could also just sew like an inch at a time and then just tuck in the fur right before I went under the needle. I should give you an important important warning right now. Um, okay, well, it's not really a warning warning, but something to keep in mind, you should be buying yourself a thinner, shorter hair fur and make your life a whole lot easier. The one I got, it's longer hair, it's thick, it's full and luxurious, but oh my God, was it hell to work with. It was so thick that it was hard to pin together because the sewing pins would just be too short for the thickness. And I broke a few needles doing this until I finally went out and bought myself a heavier duty needle. So my recommendation, get yourself heavy duty needles and backups of those. For my machine, it was the 11018 needles and some strong all purpose thread. The manual that came with your sewing machine when you got it will likely tell you what you need for heavier duty projects. So while this is an easy project compared to something like a fur coat or vest, working with thick fur makes it more difficult because on top of tucking in the fur at the seams, you have to go really slowly. And whenever I would hear the machine almost stall, I would just turn the handle on the side to push the needle in like manually and then just keep moving on. I never even came close to pressing on the foot press with full force. I went really, really slow. 
So now that I finally sewed all the way around, again, I left maybe 20 centimeters open, I'm gonna pull it inside out. And now we're about 95% done. The last few steps is you're gonna take a needle and thread and hand sew the last hole shut. Again, fur is thick. You need to take your time here and make lots of stitches. And finally, with a brush again, brush out any of the seams that look like a clenched butthole to loosen up those hairs that are caught inside. And finally, you're done. This is the finished result, you guys. Here it is. Not much different from the back, but I just want to show you my back. It was a super easy project, you guys. I hope you can try it out yourselves. As long as you have yourself a couple of backup needles and you don't choose a fur that's like super thick, everything should go pretty smoothly. Fur is like my favorite accessory to wear. My closet is clearly full of it. And I understand it's like spring, which is not really the season for fur, but you, if you're not from Canada, you don't understand. The season for fur is like two weeks on October and then you wear your winter parka for the next, no joke, six months. And in any case, being a diva is a year long job. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video and learned something cool. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.